This is the Hoof GP. And this is cow 4715. Come on, does anybody remember her? So this is how cow 4715's foot looked last time. We're gonna revisit that foot, take an in-depth look at how she was during the first visit and see how she's doing now. I'll be honest, it's a bit dubious. This, as Craigie Boy said, is the Hoof GP. So here's cow 4715, as she looks today, and clearly she's not all that lame, but she's definitely far from perfect. Right, let's get her in the car, get her foot in the air and see exactly what is happening. So we've actually just trimmed 43 cows and only put a couple of blocks on. We've gone to put 47, 25, 4715 in the crush and look what she's done. She's grazed both of her ankles. Sometimes when cows are together, they fight and squabble and squirm, and obviously that's exactly what she's been doing. But luckily for her, it's usually no big deal, so we'll just clean it up with iodine and get that back left foot in the air. So now she's in the crush, let's take a detailed look at how she was during the first visit because she was in a serious mess. When we first picked up her foot, it wasn't all that clear what the problem was until... Oh! Wasn't expecting that though. While seeming fairly dramatic, a sudden squirt of pus like that can be massively beneficial. Not only does it really reduce the pain the cow's enduring, but it also lets us know there's a cavity lurking beneath what is seemingly good and sound hoof horn, and it lets us Get on with the job. As you can see, her foot wasn't seriously overgrown, so this problem was the result of an injury. And because there's lack of overgrowth, it meant we really needed to be patient and take our time so that we didn't go too deep. That pressure build-up that we saw at the start, i.e. when the pus squirted out of her foot, was causing a huge, I cannot, overstate this, an unbelievably huge amount of pain because of the pressure. We've released that pressure, so the pain should dissipate. Now it's not gonna disappear completely, obviously, because she's still got a hole in her foot at the end of the day, but it will make a huge difference. When we let her out of the crush though, that huge difference didn't materialize, and she was still in a lot of pain. That was until... So we're just packing up and make sure it's, hey, look at how 4715 walk now. She had learnt that the pain was vastly reduced now and was walking much more comfortably, but still not perfectly. So as you can see, she wasn't very well at all, but that walk was doing wonders and she was walking really well afterwards. This is her foot today. Clearly not healed, but well on its way. So that last video was a good few weeks ago and you can see actually the shedding of the hoof horn here, which is exactly why the block has worn out or come off. The hoof naturally sheds away. So if a block is on too long, it will always fall off because literally the hoof is falling off itself. That's what happens in the wild and the drier the conditions of a shed, the quicker it happens because it naturally sheds away, which is why there's no block left here. Plus she's in a high wear environment. So the block wears away fairly quickly. But as you can see, she clearly isn't completely healed yet, but she does look miles better than she did. But that's not good enough. So let's get it looking nice and Beautiful. When you're trimming a cow's foot like this, you're so scared that you go too far and undo any of that good job that we did the last time.
His foot doesn't look fantastic. You may be thinking, oh, that's not a beautiful foot, Mr. Hoof GB. But for me and for the cow, this is much more beautiful than it was last time. On soft tissue like this, it tends to flex and bow out of the way. So you end up using a sawing motion to try to get through it without causing any damage. Oh, this bit doesn't look good. Oh, I'm liking this. I am really, really liking this. Although she is protesting very so slightly. We need to get rid of these hard edges. These hard edges can lead to even more delamination of the sole. Things like this. There's already a split there, just like a piece of metal or a crack in your car windscreen. If there's a crack in a cow's hoof, it'll keep going. So you need to round it out to stop that from happening. This is delicate. I know we're really close to Corium, but there's still hard edges there and there's still detached hoof on it and that is no use. These black marks are completely inconsequential. It's just staining from the manure that she's walking on sometimes. These, however, are not inconsequential. These are cracks. Again, I'm using that sawing action so that I can control exactly how deep I'm going. It's like making a tiny little cut, coming back, making another tiny little cut, coming back, making another tiny little cut. So I can really control how deep I go. Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Don't go. Don't go too far. Can you guys see that crack right there? That one looks like the big problem, but it's not. It's this little crack here, just above the end of my knife right there that we need to get rid of. See, it's going deeper. that hole is opening up. This foot is taking a lot more work than I was anticipating. It really is, but we are getting there. This is called the axial wall and any problem here is seriously hard to heal. So to be honest, we've done well to even get this far. Oh, oh, that was nice. Brilliant. We are right at the root of the problem here, which is fantastic because obviously if you don't heal the root of the problem, you cannot heal the rest of it, can you? Kind of like mopping up a flooded bathroom with the tap still on, isn't it? You're making a difference but you're not going to stop the flood. That was a good analogy, wasn't it? I'm quite impressed with myself there, to be honest. Are you, Craig? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like I said, folks, don't do drugs. So we are getting there. We're very, very close to finishing this trim. As regular viewers will know, there is one very important step still to do, but there is still some trimming to be done. We're just about to attach a block to the inner claw to take the weight off the outer claw, so she's not going to need the height and the heel of that outer claw. So we might as well lower it and make sure we get as much weight as possible off that digit. During the first visit, we didn't use one of these polyurethane blocks. You see, they're not biodegradable, so we don't use them 
where possible, if that makes sense. But they do last much, much longer. And had we used this lock in the first instance, she probably wouldn't need another one right now because it would still be in place, still doing its job. So maybe that was poor foresight on my end. I should have used a harder lock so that we didn't need to trim her straight away. But because it's worn out, the farmer has pulled this cow back out because she's not been walking perfectly. So it's been a perfect opportunity for us to revisit this cow. And as we all know, revisits are absolutely crucial to making sure these cows are as comfortable as they possibly can be, as quickly as they possibly can be. Anyway, she is done. Her other three feet will just be checked. So we'll go ahead and let her out of the crush and see how she's walking now with this new polyurethane block on. Look at that, lovely and clean. I've got high hopes for this cow. Oh, that doesn't look very good. I'm just gonna give her front ankles another quick spray with iodine because she's still in the crush and that'll help them heal up much more quickly. Even though, as I said earlier, it's only a very minor graze. Cow 4715 has already had a pretty traumatic story. She went extremely lame because she probably bashed her foot at some point and that caused the abscess. As you can see, it's taken a few weeks for us to get her back to this stage, but I'm really hopeful. In fact, I'm pretty much certain that next time we pick her foot up, it'll almost be entirely healed. Won't it, Lost? They're really like just big puppies. They really, really are, look. When they first come in, they're kind of scared and jumpy and all that. And then you show them a wee bit of love and they're absolutely fine with you. They really are. Clearly, still not walking perfectly, but definitely walking much better than she was last time. We'll take a quick look at her again in five or 10 minutes when she's had time to settle down with that block and see how she's walking then. And just like that, it has been five minutes. So let's see how she's liking that block now. She's getting used to it already. I love it when a plan comes together. This has been the Hoof GP guys. Make sure you've subscribed so you can find out how the progress to count 4715 goes. Cheers for now. Catch you later. <laughs> Sometimes I go to end the video and I just think, what do I say? We'll just say goodbye. Ciao for now.